Hello and a very warm welcome back to another video. Today I will teach you how to load data from an Excel file into R. Uh, I will start with a file where the data is beautifully placed as uh, in this Excel file right here. So you have uh, data that is that starts in the top right corner and there is nothing else in this Excel file but the data I want to import. But uh, I will also show you a little bit more difficult version uh, where the data is yeah, just anywhere in the Excel file and there's a lot of stuff around it, how to extract just the data you want uh, here in the middle. If you have not done so already, please subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below this video to make future videos possible. And let's get started. So when you're in RStudio, the first step of importing data from Excel into R is done by loading a package called ReadXL. So from an earlier video, you know how this is done. Uh, it is also now displayed in the top right corner. Um, so you basically just write in library and then in brackets the package name, so readxl in this case. So I run this line of code. And once this is done, most of the time, importing the data from an Excel file is as simple as typing the following code. You type read underscore excel and then in parentheses the name of the, of the Excel file. So in my case, I want to load in a package, uh, uh, an Excel file called NBA. And I do this by typing now NBA. And now you must not forget the extension .xlsx. Every Excel file has this extension. Uh, and it's very important, otherwise this will not work. Later in this video, I will also show you how to import the data directly from your Windows Explorer or your Finder app. Um, if you directly want to go there, there is a timestamp in the description. Yeah, Then you don't have to type in the file name. Uh, you can choose it directly from your Explorer or your Finder app. But it also has some disadvantages I will talk about later. But for now, I uh, also want to give uh, our data a variable name. So where I want to assign my data to a variable, I will just give this variable the name data. Now if we run this line of code, then our data is imported. If running this code should produce an error in your studio, then this probably means that you have to change your working directory. Check out the video that is now displayed in the top right corner in order to fix this error and uh, then come back. Now we can view our data by typing view data. And now we run this line of code and we can see our data. And in this case we see that this was very well done. Even the first row of my Excel file, uh, you can see here, this is my first row, this were the column names. And R automatically uh, overtook those as column names, which is what I want. Uh, if you don't want this, so if you don't want your first row of your data to be the column names, then you can set the following argument to false. So you type a comma and then col underscore names and then false. And if you run this, then you will see that when you view our data now, that the first row of our data is the first row of my Excel file and uh, some column names are automatically created, which are in this case are just dot 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 one, dot 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 two and so forth. But in this case, of course, I don't want that, so I will undo it. Okay, now it works this simple if the data starts in the top right corner and there's nothing else written in the Excel file besides the data we want to import and the data is in the first sheet. So my Excel file right here fulfills all these cr criteria and in this case it is really that simple. Now let's look at some more difficult cases. So let's assume you want to import some data that is not in the first sheet but in the second sheet of an Excel file. So here I have a second sheet called MBA2 and now I want to import this data from this sheet. So you do this by adding the argument here in your readxl function sheet equals and then you can either type the number of the sheet, so in this case this would be the second sheet, or you can type in the name of the sheet, so it would be NBA2 in this case. And if you run this then it imports the second sheet. Now we can also see that this data frame is quite a mess. Yeah, So we have unwanted column names, uh, we have all this stuff around the data that we don't want because R is importing everything, also the stuff that is written here. So now we have to find a way to extract the data we want. 
So we want to start here uh, in C5. So this cell should be the top left cell. And uh, then we go all the way down here to this cell, the bottom right cell, which is J295. You can see it here. And uh, yeah, so we want to extract this data. And uh, to do that, we add the argument range equals, and then in parentheses first, we type in C5 because that is the top, most top left cell we want in our data. And then the bottom right cell, uh, which is the end of our data is J295. And now if we import this, then again, our data fits and also the column names fit. And we can now immediately use our data for our analysis purposes. Another very useful argument of the read Excel function is the argument NA equals. So let's say you have some missing values in your data. Most of the time, these are not directly uh, marked as NA in your data. So for example, they can be another symbol like a star. So let's put a star here or and a star here. Yeah, but this is uh, just a placeholder. This could be any other uh, symbol here. Um, but let's say that uh, a star represents an NA in our data. And now I want to tell R this. And then I type in NA the argument equals and then in parentheses my symbol. So simply a star here. Now if I run this, then I will see that here where the stars were in my actual file, an NA is created in R. Now the last thing I want to show you is the choose.files option. So instead of typing the document name here, you can simply type choose.files. And uh, if you run this, then there will be a window popping up here and you can directly choose your data from here. Uh, so let's do this and your data is imported. This is useful if you just want to look at the data real quick and don't want to change your working directory for this. However, for reproducibility, this is of course not so useful because you have to choose the file every time you run the code. Yeah, this sums up this video. It would mean a lot to me if you would leave a like and a subscription. This will also keep me motivated to make more content as I then know that there is an audience interested in these kinds of videos. Please so also comment with feedback and recommendations for future videos. Other than that, I hope this video was helpful. See you soon and take care. If you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future. If you would like to support this channel financially, there is a donation link in the description.